Hey everyone, Jessica Cabasi here. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to go from this image to this. And it's really simple. I know it probably looks like it, well, I don't know what it looks like, but it's really easy to do. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to do it all in Lightroom. But the first thing that I'm gonna do is go to the default settings on this picture so we can begin. And that is Command Shift R. It's really handy to know that, I mean, you're able to just erase everything on the picture. So if you end up having like this really ugly coloring, you could just erase it and forget that it ever happened, you know? No one has to know. So the first thing that I want to do is toggle around with the tone curve. It's my favorite thing to use. It really makes a big difference on the picture. And I already kind of have an idea of the tone curve that I want to do. Um, it's very slight it's actually only using like four or five points so usually i don't do like too much i don't get too crazy with this you guys i don't even do anything on the weekend you think i'm gonna get crazy with the tone curve so no and one just a lot of people were telling me that they have issues with tone curve like or even curves in general and what my advice to you is just to go very simple like look at this little difference and I didn't really do that, that much to this. Another thing is I want to just decrease the saturation of the yellows. I just like this look in pictures. It really does make a difference if you notice like in her hair. Like watch if I increase, decrease. I don't know. I just, I kind of prefer that look to my images. So I usually do that. And the next step that we're going to do is go to the adjustment brush. And this is where all the magic happens you know, really give credit to this brush. The first thing that I did was I actually already have predetermined settings and usually what I'll do is if I want to make the background pop, I'll always lower the exposure. For this picture, it was a little overexposed, so I wanna bring that detail back. So again, I lowered the exposure, I hired the contrast, and I added a lot of clarity, so it's at 25 right now and just a pop of saturation so like four and because like I'm a jerk I just put one sharpness and another thing is I added a little bit of color just that yellow tint and it is number 49 and it's only at 16% so it's not too noticeable unless you got like a microscope or magnifying glass so what I'm doing is simply coloring over because I'm an expert color that should be an occupation oh yeah it's uh, something that would be very good at so here we go just coloring over the background only I'm not touching the model really just uh, using all my skills everything that I learned in art school to just really be able to color this very well here we go I think that's pretty good and if you notice that, you know, you don't like the exposure, you want it to be darker, all you have to do is just toggle this back. See? Now she's looking like she's in like a dramatic movie with like Tom Cruise. But I liked how it was previously, so I'm going to keep it at negative 37. You could toggle this again back and forth to your liking. I'm going to add just a tiny bit more clarity though and a bit more contrast. And as I was talking about before, the color, you can always change it. Like, look, for instance, I could do this really any color, but I'm staying with that really light yellow. And I'm pulling that back up, and we're going to add just a couple more things, and we'll be good to go. And the next thing that I'm going to do is change up the hue. Um, I'm going to add a highlight, and I already have a number for this. I have a specific number. And it's like a very subtle blue-ish color. You see that different the difference that, that just made? Here, I'll show you guys. I'll toggle that. It's very slight. I always tell everyone just make very small adjustments. And then the shadows, I'm keeping this at a 3. And this is a yellow tint. As you can see, it's labeled number 0. So, so last couple things, you could add... A little bit of green to your picture. I like to have green in my picture. And I believe that is all. Let's uh, see 
what the final result is. But before we do that, my OCD is getting the better of me, so let me just uh, fix this. If anyone is wondering, this was taken in Switzerland, and it's really depressing to look at this. And I'm living in Michigan. <laughs> I want to just jump into this picture. Like, why can't why can't this this thing be me? Like, I, why can't this sign be me? Like, I wish that was me, the sign. <laughs> I want to be a sign in Switzerland. <laughs> like a directional sign. So really, really quickly, one thing that I forgot to mention is that you can actually get back the sky detail pretty easily. All you have to do is go back to the adjustment brush that we used previously, click on the point that you made, which selects the entire area, and all you have to do is lower the highlight section. And really, it's something that I just forgot to do. I'm human, it happens. Um, I, I still wanted to add it in there because I think it gives a really nice effect. And with that, I'm going to just higher the contrast. And you can play with each one, um, shadows. You can bring the shadows up and down. Um, I'm just going to keep that. I'm going to lower the shadows just a tiny bit, but I'm going to keep everything else pretty much the same. But it just gives that detail back in the sky, um, which I think makes the picture look great. And let me show you guys the before and after. This is the before and this is the after. I really hope that you guys like this tutorial. Let me know what you guys think and if you have suggestions for future tutorials. Thank you guys so much for watching.